Okay, so we are beginning with uh, Ancestry Part 4, your DNA, your Ancestry DNA test. This is primarily to review and go over all of the different menu options in, in the iAncestry and what is available there when you take your DNA test through that company. And also to, to just kind of acquaint you with, with some of the different searches you can do within, within their website. My email address is posted here at the beginning, busby.missionary at gmail.com if you have questions that you want to send to me directly, you're welcome to. And the presentation is also available, the PDF of the slides at nancybusbyfamilyhistory.com forward slash ancestry. This is a four part series, uh, beginning ancestry and we are on part four, your ancestry DNA test. So I want to start with DNA overview, and I'm going to play a couple of videos from Ancestry Academy, which is a, a, uh, a resource that I have mentioned before, but we'll, we'll have them kind of share a couple of things from their point of view, and then we'll go into, into the website itself too. So let's see if I can get this gone. One of the great new additions to genealogy in the last few years has been the event of DNA, most specifically autosomal DNA. And I suggest you get your DNA done and every living relative you can find as well. The more, the better, and the better results you're going to get. So once you've spit into that tube, you'll wait a little while, and then you'll get that email that'll say the results are in. You'll go click it, and there you'll be, and you'll have that magic answer as to where your ancestors came from. You'll probably find out that that myth in your family, and we've all got it, that you're Native American may not be true, but the other information you're gonna find is great. This is an example, it's mine. I find out that 51% of my DNA is Europe West. That means that I thought out my family, or at least the DNA I inherited, comes from Germany in that area. Once you start looking at your results, you might want to start digging deeper. Click on one of the areas and it'll give you a little bit more information. It'll show you the geographic regions and talk a little bit about the places those peoples came from. Now remember, these results can go back hundreds and hundreds of years. So even if you don't know any of your ancestors were from Germany, this could be further back. It just means you need to keep looking. Ancestry DNA looks for DNA samples in about 26 different regions. Now we're always updating, and when we update, we will go apply those tests to your current sample. So don't worry, if we make improvements, you'll see those improvements. But this gives you an idea of the different areas that we look for. Now, DNA is an interesting thing. You get half from your father, and you get half from your mother, but it doesn't always come up in equal parts. Here you're looking at mine, my husband's, and my son's. Sometimes as time goes on, you just lose things. For example, the Italy Greece that I have in my DNA and my husband's doesn't show up in my son. But he got, seems to get most of his Finland, Northwest Russia DNA. You'll even find between siblings, the percentages change. So don't expect that everybody gets the same thing. In fact, you probably want to test all your brothers and sisters because they may match people that you don't. And you never know where the next clue is going to come from. Or look at it this way. Everybody's got those little pieces of information. You get about 50% from your mother and about 50% from your father. But think about your grandparents. At best, you're getting around 25%. The further back you go, the littler and littler the pieces are. It's going to be really hard to match further back. That's why the more testing you do, the better. Now, one of the awesome things that happen is if you've got a tree and you've been building it back and not just that one side, you don't want to go down just one line, do the whole thing. Remember, your tree is a big, big event. You're going to start getting matches, and they're going to tell you who you're related to. And if you're lucky, you're going to find hints. And what that means is somebody in their tree, this distant cousin of yours, can trace themselves back to the same ancestor you have. Now that assumes that everybody's done their research correctly, 
but it's a pretty good clue if you're trying to prove a connection that you haven't been able to prove before. Okay. Um, so I, in the presentation, there is a live link if you want to watch the entire video, but that just kind of gives you an introduction to DNA through ancestry. Um, I, I definitely recommend that to get the most out of your DNA test, to be sure to link your tree or one of your trees to, to your DNA test. And we'll go over how to do that if you haven't, or how to change that if you want to link it to a different tree. I've also got here a family relationship chart so that you can, can uh, figure out, you know, who's your first cousin or second cousin twice removed, that kind of thing, and how those relationships work. Um, if you, in the uh, PDF, version that is on my website. If you click on photo credit, it will take you to a link where you can download this chart yourself. So with DNA, something that you, you might see or hear about is a centimorgan. And this is a unit of measurement, but not something that we're, we're generally familiar with, um, with, you know, like in inches or kilometers or that type of thing. This is uh, considered to be a measurement of probability. And so, the, so the, when you see how many centimorgans um, or CM that you have in relation to someone else, it's, it's predicting the probability of your relationship with that person. And I, I also got this chart from familysearch.org that gives kind of the range of centimorgans and the predicted relationship between you and in one of your matches in DNA. So I thought this was kind of a helpful chart to have on hand also. If you want to refer back to that, again, you can click on the photo credit in the PDF document and that will take you to a link where you can download this or zoom in and out of it as, you, as it will be helpful for you. One thing that's important to remember with, with uh, your DNA is, to, is how you analyze that information. So I want to just watch a portion of this video also. And this is the last video that we'll watch today on this presentation, but I just thought I had some, some helpful information to pass on to you all. The third step of the genealogical proof standards is to analyze the results and analyze the evidence that has been gathered for your research question that you asked. In this case, the one primary question we always want to ask ourselves is, does the genetic evidence and the non-genetic evidence support the hypothesized biological relationship? So do we have agreement with the documents and with what the DNA suggests the relationship should be? A couple of years ago, some bones were found in a parking lot in England. Researchers hypothesized that these bones might be that of Richard III. They did DNA testing, looked at some historical evidence, and combined all of that information together to conclude that the bones were in fact that of Richard III. However, it was very interesting to note in the paper that the non-genetic evidence was actually a thousand times stronger than the genetic evidence in favor of these bones being that of Richard III. So although DNA can help us, it is always important to cross-reference that information with the documentary and the historical records that we find in our Okay, so we definitely don't want to think that DNA stands alone. Um, it should be in combination with the research that you do. So let's go over the DNA results summary. To get there, you click on the DNA, um, DNA menu, and the pull-down menu is the first one on the top, your DNA results. Once you have received your results from Ancestry, this will show up in your account. If you haven't linked your tree already or you want to change which tree you're linked to, go to the settings in the top right hand corner. And it tells me that my test is linked to the Busby Tally family tree. And if I wanted to change that, I could click change and, and select a different tree that I have in my account. As you scroll down, there are different privacy preferences that you'll want to go through one by one and make sure you're comfortable with, with those, with how it's being displayed and what the different privacy settings are. And also your sharing preferences. 
if you want other people to see them or not. And then you also have uh, management of your test. So any preferences about managing your test and which notifications you'll receive can be changed and updated under settings. At the very bottom are actions. And this is something that you'll, you'll want to go to if you ever want to download the data from your DNA with your test from Ancestry. I've done this before and then uploaded my DNA data in, into other companies' websites and, and uh, added it to their database. So there are some companies that will allow you to do that. For instance, I've done it with MyHeritage and with Family Tree DNA. I believe there are some others that will also. Um, there are like 23andMe and Ancestry don't allow you to upload DNA data from another company's DNA site. But there are, there are some out there that, um, that will do that. Genome, you can also upload your DNA data. And then it puts your DNA into their database and does an, an analysis based on the data that they're comparing to. And if for any reason you want to delete your DNA test, that option is here under settings at the very bottom also. Okay, when you want to return back to DNA Home, you just click on the back button at the top left. And we'll look, take a look now at your DNA story, which is the second item on that pull down menu. When you click on DNA story, it's going to bring up this map with your ethnicity estimate. This is mine that we're looking at. Um, I am from, well, my, my DNA ancestry at least is from England and Northwestern Europe, Scotland, um, and Wales, Ireland, Sweden, and Denmark. Interestingly, I have on my tree, I haven't, haven't gone back into Sweden or Denmark. So that 3% is, is probably much farther back in my tree than, than I've been able to go with my research. And sometimes that, though that kind of information will come up and you'll, you'll find, a, find a surprise there from time to time. There are two icons that you'll see on the ethnicity estimate. The, the solid dot or circle will give you origins from 500 to 1,000 years. And the results that, that have the smaller dot with the little dash line around it are more recent origins of ancestry between 50 and 300 years ago. You can see that on mine, the Scottish Central Lowlands and some of the DNA communities have this icon. If I were to click on my Scottish Central Lowlands, it's going to give me some information about that area of the world. And you can click on any of the, any of the uh, countries or areas of, of uh, the, the results come up from. So I can learn more about the, the people in the Scottish Central Lowlands and kind of how the, how the migration happened in, into and from those areas and the time frame. Okay, I'm going to go into this map now on my, on my uh, Ancestry account, just real quick so you can see. So I'm just clicking and holding and panning. I can scroll in and out to zoom in and out on these areas. And as I hover my mouse over the different countries and regions, it will highlight over here on the, on the left. So you can see I'm over the Denmark and Sweden region. And then the Scottish Central Lowlands, which is where some of my ancestors on my, on my uh, family tree with research definitely hail from. If you click on the, the the area specific. It's going to bring you to the map that highlights that area and will tell you about, about the region. Um, also notice the percentage that it says that you are on your DNA is an estimate and it can and it will show up in a different range. So my the range of estimate from Ireland is anywhere between zero to 15 percent, but they estimate that it averages out to probably have about eight percent Irish ancestry. And then I click back to ethnicity estimate. And then I can look at another area 
if I go to England and Northwestern Europe and click on that, you'll see that my range of estimate ranges between 39% and 58% from, from this area of the world. So this is how you'll kind of navigate around and explore what your, your, your est ethnicity estimate is and how they get that and where that comes from and which area of the world is referring to. You can also navigate to your tree from here. You can print information off of this page by clicking on the icon, the print icon on the top left. And you can also share this information by clicking on the share button. Um, it's got options to copy the link so you can email or text that to someone else in your family or a friend who's interested or someone who you're doing research with, maybe a distant cousin or relative. You can save the image, download it to your computer or tweet it out or post it on Facebook. Those are the options that they have available right now. Okay, going back to our presentation, let's take a look at DNA matches now. This is going to be the third item down on your, on your DNA pull down menu. So when you click on DNA matches, it will bring you to, well, when you're on the homepage, you can go to it from clicking on DNA matches or from the DNA homepage. Um, it's right here in the, in the central panel. You can click on view all DNA matches there too. But anyway, it will take you to this page that shows a list of your DNA matches. And you can see, I can scroll up and down through this list. I can toggle on different filters that are in the middle. I can search for people who have common ancestors. So these are, these are going to be with people who have their DNA test linked to a tree and it is a, and it would be a public tree. Um, sometimes a private tree will show that will show you if there's a common ancestor too. You can mes message people. You can add notes um, in reference to a specific relative. You can look at their trees. You can look at their shared DNA, or you can go to groups. You can also do a search for a specific individual, and there are different options for sorting. The second tab on the right is to look at maps. When you click on this, it's going to show you the area of the world where your DNA matches come from. On the left are filters that you can sort by um, specifically looking for first cousins, second cousins, third or fourth cousins. So they have it broken out there for their filters. If you click on one of these green dots that has the numbers or the quantity of people, if you click on the green dot, it's going to zoom into that, to that area and you'll see kind of a, a better breakdown of those 19 in, in this case matches. And if I want to, I can zoom in, zoom in and out to, to get closer, or you can click on one of the dots again. If I click on that number three dot, it's going to show those three close, uh, close relatives that are in that area that were underneath that, that green dot. If I'm interested in comparing my DNA with, with a specific individual, I just click on, on their icon. Sometimes it'll have their image if they've uploaded a picture or it'll just have their initials if they don't have a picture. But if I want to look at this person here, that's an area that I know my ancestors hail from. If I click on the hurt on that, that it will bring up this preview of that individual. And when I click on that preview, it's going to open up a comparison between uh, my DNA and hers. And it tells the relationship. And you'll see right there under fourth to sixth cousin, um, we share less than 1% of our DNA. And it says there are 23 centimorgans. That's that lowercase c, capital M, is referring to the centimorgans that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. And our DNA is shared across two segments of the DNA. So there are three tabs going across the bottom, trees, ethnicity, and shared matches. It's showing up these shared matches and I can scroll up and down. So if you wanna see what, which um, matches through Ancestry you, you share, you can scroll up and down to see those. When you're done looking at this page and exploring the options here, you just click back. It'll take you back to the list of, of uh, of matches. 
So from here, I'm going to go ahead and hop back into my into my uh, personal ancestry account. So we can kind of look through a couple of things here. Um, so as I scroll up and down, it's bringing up all of the DNA matches that I have in the, in the site. And it's sorting them right now by relationship, um, from closest relationships to siblings to close family. Um, I'll, I'll use this as an example. So these first top three names, I know that I recognize these names. I know that they're my nieces and nephews. And it's, it's saying close family, first cousin. There is a way to, to get more specific when you know the specific relationship of that. And I will go over that in, in the uh, slide presentation. But one thing you can do is you can, where it asks, do you recognize them? You can click on yes. Do you know which side of the family? Well, I know that this is my sister, so that is on both sides of my family. So I click both sides and it's suggesting that they think it's probably a sister and that's correct. Or I can click on, I'm not sure, but I know that she's my sister, so I'm going to select that. And then I confirm, yes, that's what I meant to pick. And now, instead of asking me what the relationship is, it says it has view match. And over here on the left, it's updated to say that she's my sister. And I could go th through and do that with any of these. And then when you're looking at your list of people, you can um, specify exactly how you're related to them when you, when you know, or as you, as you do research and you figure out, oh, this is my third cousin twice removed. You can put that specific information in. If I, one, one of the ways I really like to search is through common ancestors. So if I click on that filter, um, and this uh, it's a third third column on the on the right. I like to look for people who have a public tree, and it shows a common ancestor. And an example of what that will look like is if I click on common ancestor for one of these people, it's going to bring up the comparison between my DNA and this other individual who is my cousin. And it says that our common ancestor is, our, our grandparents are our common ancestor. And it shows my cousin's tree and where, where they are on his tree. So I can compare between my tree and his tree. If you click on expand tree, that's just going to bring up the larger tree showing out, showing out to seven generations if they have that. You can also click on view full tree to um, look at their entire tree if that is a public tree. And again, it tells you if it is when you click on it at first. Um, there's also the ethnicity comparison. So if I click on that tab, it's going to show between me and my cousin, which areas of the world we have in common and what those percentages are estimated to be. And then I can also look at the shared matches between myself and this person. So that can be helpful, especially if, as you go a few generations out and you find people who you don't recognize or who you don't know, you can always click on their information and do a comparison and contact them if you think that they might be able to help you in your research. All right, looking at DNA through lines is a quick way uh, and a great way to see any matches that you have through specific um, through specific people on your tree. This option is the fourth down on your pull down menu under the DNA tab. When you click on that, it's going to open up this page that has an icon of of the uh, of the generations of your family that they're pulling from your family tree that your test is linked to. So it's, again, important to have your, your test linked to a tree to really get the most bang for your buck out of this. So as you can see, it starts with my parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents. Another way to look at through lines is from the family tree. And when you see the individual's name on the tree, it's going to be this little blue icon. When you click on that, you can look at through lines. And then it's going to bring up their preview, and you'll see the through lines option on the bottom. 
you just click on that down arrow and then you can view the through lines for that individual on that on your tree. So if you're doing research for a specific person and you want to go to your DNA matches for that person, you can do that from your family tree also. So when I click on to look at the through lines, it's going to show this ancestor here at the top and some of his children who there are DNA matches and it lists the number of DNA matches under each of the individuals from my tree. And it will show you, and here's me, Nancy Busby, and there are three, three generations between myself and this Berryman S. Dempsey, who's a son of Jesse. So if, if I click on those, I can, I can um, any, any of these, you just click on them and it's going to open up the tree underneath that individual and you can see who the DNA matches are and what it, and how they're related. You can also view this page as a list instead of a tree. So if you click on list, it's going to show <clears throat> the individual and their family line. So you can, like I can find this Levi C. Dempsey. I have 30 matches with that person. Maybe I just wanna see the three matches from Larkin Charles Dempsey because I don't have a lot of information about him and I'm curious to know who I'm related to there. So this is another way to kind of scroll through and evaluate your matches. Through lines can also be found from the main page of the DNA on the, the third panel on the right. So you just click on explore through lines and that will take you to, to this page that I already showed you, which starts with the parents, grandparents, great grandparents. And as I said, you can scroll down to see more family lines and when you find an individual who you're interested in doing research on and checking out DNA matches with, you just hover your mouse over that name and it's going to show you how many DNA matches and what your relationship to that person is in Centimorgans. And if you want to continue doing a, doing a uh, research on the DNA matches with that person, you just click on their name and it will open up this page again that shows it as a tree. Again, you can click on list if you just want to see it as a list. The through lines are these DNA matches that are within the same tree. And you can click on any of the arrows to find DNA matches on, on the line. So when you see that little arrow there, where you can close those arrows, there's also arrows by the Ground, great grandfather, or, or between the second great grandfather and great grandfather, so I can go sideways on the tree and look at the siblings of that person as well. So I'm going to go to a live link here, so you can just kind of see me navigate around through through this. So if I want to look at, say, this Jesse Agnes Busby, I have six DNA matches, and I want to know who those people are and see if they're people who I know. So when I click on her name, it puts her in the center. And it has two trees that I can open up and scroll down and see. So these are people who have taken DNA tests and it's predicting I'm second cousins with them and it's showing how that connection is made in common back with our common ancestor, Andrew Montgomery Busby. Or I can look at her, at her uh, son with his four DNA matches for the other four. And I can see my relationship and the the centimorgans or the, the estimated likelihood of relationship. If I want to close that window, I just click the up arrow. I can go sideways and look at a sibling. So you can scroll through the siblings left to right by just clicking on those arrows on, above the person's name. If you click on a, one of the parents or grandparents' names, it's going to put them in the center position and show you the different batches that are available to explore. So you can do that with any of them and then open up any of these DNA matches. And when you click on one of the, one of the matches, it's going to bring up this page that we've already seen a preview of with the, with the comparison between you and that person it will say if there's a common ancestor between your tree and theirs, and you can click between ethnicity and shared matches. 
be sure to use to use these these different filters because that will help you to um, to kind of dig into, especially if you have a lot of a lot of uh, DNA matches, dig into the ones that you really want to see. Okay, so this takes us to comparing your DNA to an individual DNA match. If I go to this, my second great grandfather, Andrew Montgomery Busby, and look at my DNA matches for him. Under Ralph Covey Busby, who's one of my grandfather's brothers, I can see that there, there's a portion of that tree maybe I'm not that familiar with, and I want to, to uh, contact that person and learn more about our relationship. I just click on their name, and it brings this up. This, this same page up that compares the two. As I scroll down, it's going to show shared surnames on our tree and how many people share those surnames. I can also click on this tab that says Eric Titus's tree only, if I just want to see his tree and not both of our trees. And there's also a map toward the bottom that shows where these common ancestors are from. You can see it's dropping them right there in about Scotland, which is consistent with my DNA test. If I want to message an individual who I have a shared, a shared match with, then I just click on message up here at the top and it will open up the message window so you can begin typing your message. And this will be saved with all of your messages that you've made contacts with people, whether it's through their family trees or through DNA. All, the, all of those messages that you have will be in the same place. When you look at ethnic, the ethnicity tab of comparing, you'll see your DNA on the left and the individuals on the right. And this just gives you an idea of how much uh, DNA from different areas of the world you share or have in common with one another. And that's always going to be a little, most more often than not, it's going to be a little bit different because um, even between siblings, your DNA will be different. So the more people in your family that you can get to take a DNA test, the, the broader overall um, scope of, of view of, of where your family's DNA comes from will be available to you. And then under shared matches, it will show you in a list form, and then you can scroll down to explore all of them or sort by any of these filters. And this just walks you through um, changing the relationship on a, on a person. And you can do that from here, from any of the, of the DNA match lists, you can do that. So if you click on yes, this is my daughter, I recognize her name, and she's from both sides of, my, of, of our tree. And I click on daughter, I click confirm, and you'll see that will update our relationship information instead of just saying close family. Um, and then I can click on view match, and it brings up this page that puts us side by side. My daughter hasn't uploaded a tree, so it's not showing a common ancestor. So if you don't see one, that's because that person either doesn't have a tree or doesn't have a, an ancestor in common on their tree. You can also um, add, add groups, add to groups or create groups, and you can add a note about an individual who you're, who you're, um, who you're in contact with or who you want to contact or any information that you learn um, from, from your DNA matches together. Under add to group, it will open up this option to, it will give you a list of groups if you've made groups. Um, so you can create a custom group. Perhaps you want to create a custom group for biological father. Um, and you can, you can add some of your DNA matches to um, specifically be uh, with, your, with that group, whatever group you decide you want to divide your, your different DNA matches into. And you can also start your matches by checking the box. So when you're doing, Maybe you want to put a star by people who you've already looked at so that you know which ones to not go back to again. You can use that however makes sense, best, best sense to you. All right, one of the other features with DNA and ancestry are traits. And that is found on the fifth, fifth line down under the DNA tab. So if you click on that, you'll learn about 
the different traits of DNA. So it, this is just kind of a preview to the information that you can find there if you haven't already explored it for yourself. Um, where did your freckles come from or why do you hate cilantro? Um, it, it advertises you can discover clues in your eDNA about all of these, where these different traits come from and how they relate to ge geographic regions in your DNA. Um, and we'll take a look at how that all comes together here in a second. So here's a little primer on DNA and chromosomes. DNA is the instructional manual for all living things. It's separated into, into long, tightly wound pieces called chromosomes. And people typically have 46 chromosomes grouped into 23 pairs. We are basic science, right? DNA is all about the science. And your genes are pieces of the DNA within the chromosome. So these are the traits that are going to um, dictate what your eye color ends up being, or if you have a unibrow, or if you, if you sneeze when you look into the sun, all kinds of different markers can be placed on your DNA through your genes. Everyone inherits half their DNA from, their, from one parent and half from another, but each sibling can end up with a different mix of DNA. So the siblings are not the same. Although I will mention that with, with um, paternal twins, I think I said that one right, my grandmother is a twin and with the DNA, her twin sister's son, the DNA always wants to predict that we're first cousins. And that, and that you know, it would show that my dad and him were, were siblings. And that's because each of them got half their DNA from an identical twin. So um, when, if you're looking at DNA with twins and you're, and you're going, what? Why, is it, why is it saying we're, we're off a generation or off, you know, off a generation of, of connection? That would be why. Your phenotype is your genes plus your environment because there are other factors that certainly come into play. In your, in your different traits. And so not everyone's traits are going to match 100% with what the DNA predicts. So don't be alarmed if it predicts you to, to be a certain way. And you know maybe it says that you'll have blue eyes, but you have green eyes or something like that. So don't be alarmed. There are lots of factors that, that play into this. Um, and then this just kind of gives you a primer about scientists have found some markers are associated with specific traits like red hair and a certain marker. Your genotype, a combination of the two letters, is what helps the ancestry scientists determine whether you're likely to have red hair or not. So when you click on traits and it opens up this window, there are going to be different, um, different attributes or traits that you can explore about yourself in association with your test. Up here at the top, they have featured endurance and fitness, heart rate recovery, muscle fatigue. And then when you see this little carrot or arrow pointing right or left, you can scroll through to see what those are. You can also compare your traits from this page with other people. You can click on invite friends and you can invite people who you have shared DNA with to compare, or you can also invite people who are not necessarily showing up as a match. Let's say you want to compare your DNA with your best friend. You can invite them to see your DNA and share with you if that's something you're interested in doing. When you click on that, it'll open this window where you can view your matches and compare, or you can email someone and invite them to compare with you. <coughs> and if you want to know more about where in the world specific traits come from. You can um, click on around the world, select a trait, and select a trait in this list that comes up that you can scroll back and forth through again. So if I were to click on sun sneezing, it's going to bring up a questionnaire. Do you sneeze after being exposed to bright light or in the sun? Who knew that your DNA could tell you this? But there it is. Now I don't, so I click no. And then it's going to show me where in the world it is more common to see that happen and what percentages, you know, where, where regions of the world where it's most likely to occur. 
So, I mean, it's, it's kind of passively interesting, but you can also scroll down and look at the specific regions that you, that your DNA says you're from and what the likelihood of that occurring. So maybe, maybe you have a sibling who sneezes when they're in the sun and, or whatever, and whatever trait it happens to be. So you can, it's kind of fun to compare those. Some of the other uh, features that they have under traits are related to nutrients and how different vitamins interact with your, with your specific DNA or body. They also have your fitness level. Now I didn't need my DNA test to tell me that I do not have the sprinter gene, but I did confirm through this test that, <laughs> that I don't have the sprinter gene. And I, and I know that running is my favorite activity. I'm happy to walk and walk and walk, but, but I don't want to be in a, in a uh, short sprinting race. And, and I, I discovered that was consistent with, with my genes. There are also different sensory items that, that, are, um, that are revealed when you get your DNA tested, things you might not have realized or thought about. When you click on these different things as you explore them, it will ask you questions about yourself and then it will give, give the probability that your DNA showed that you would or wouldn't have that trait. So th these are really just things that you wanna explore on your own. Um, I have freckles. I've got some strong Irish, Irish uh, connections. So if I want to explore what that means to me, I can click on freckles. And it will open a page that specifically talks about that trait. It's not going to help me find my ancestors, but it might help me understand where a certain trait that I have came from. And then I know which ancestors are from that area it just kind of gives that, that little bit of a physical connection. All right, there is another, another feature under DNA called the Personal Discoveries Project. And that is, let's see, what is that? We're the sixth, sixth item down on the DNA menu. And when you click on this, it is going to open this page. And the easiest way to talk about this one is to just take a look at it. So, this is got surveys. So if you're interested in surveys and data and information, you want to delve a little more into, into uh, the projects that Ancestry has associated with the DNA that they collect and you want to join in with that, you can just scroll through, um, click on learn more if this is an area that you're interested in, and you can learn more about, about different, different um, discovery projects that they have. And then as you scroll down some more, it's going to show these surveys and how many questions are remaining under these different categories. So for instance, I have completed answering all of the questions about lifestyle, but maybe I, it looks like I have some questions remaining on sensory perception. So for instance, if I click on that, it's going to bring up a questionnaire like this. So, this was my sneezing question that I answered already. It says, which of these is your strongest sense? And it does give options of other or not sure. I would say sight, probably my strongest. And am I ticklish? Oh yes, most definitely. How often are you ticklish? Well, hmm, I would say frequently. Anyway, this just gives you an idea of the kinds of questions that it asks. And this is to compare your DNA against how other people answer their questionnaires and what their DNA shows so they can um, make their, their evaluations more, more and more accurate. So you can skip questions if you don't want to. No, it's going to go on and on. So anyway, that just gives you an example of what you'll see through the Personal Discoveries Project. So this is to help participate in how Ancestry is able to evaluate their, their DNA results of, of, of everyone. And they do update their DNA from time to time. So you will see it change sometimes. So if you have ordered a new test, when you are ready to send that off, you want to activate a test and those instructions come with the test when you get it in the mail. 
So you just come here to this DNA tab and click on activate a test if you, you or someone in your family has a, has a new test. And it's going to ask you if you should be signed in as you or someone else, and it will walk you through getting that test activated and make sure that you, if, if you have more than one account, make sure you know the account username and password for that account because your DNA will be linked to that account. If you've taken a DNA test and you can't see it on your account, chances are you activated your DNA on another account and you would have to contact Ancestry to help them help you find out where, where that, which account that's under. And if you want to buy another test, you can do that under this DNA tab also. The last item on the menu is buy another test and it will walk you through how to order that test. They have sales from time to time throughout the year for different events, so keep an eye on those. Um, you can also, like if you, you can manage someone else's tests. So if you do a test for say a parent or, a, or children who maybe don't have an ancestry account, you can, um, you can manage their accounts through yours. Okay, so that takes us to the end of, of this DNA test overview and learning how to navigate your ancestry DNA tree.